Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God of heaven, we bless you, we praise and we honor you. Thank you, church. Thank you, people of God. However you've joined us, we are grateful to God for your participation and partnership in this ministry. We bless God. We come into this hour to hear the word of the Lord, so we begin in prayers. Almighty God, we thank and we bless you for such a beautiful and great day you've given to us yet again. You are the maker of all things and the maker of today. This is the day you have made. That the Lord will rejoice and we give you all the praise for it and we thank you immensely. More so for this opportunity for God to share fellowship with you and with our brethren. Lord, we thank you. We are grateful. Thank you, Father, for the fellowship so far. The service has been awesome. Even now, it's come to this hour to hear your voice. Not the voice of the preacher, not the voice of the pastor, but the voice of Almighty God, the one that brings wisdom, the one that brings uh, the cancer that we need uh, for daily living. We thank you, Father God, for your word shall always do us good. And we bless you in advance, oh God, for the value that your word will bring to us today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah. We bless and we honor you in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen and amen. A very good afternoon to everybody. Thank you for joining with us this afternoon as we as we share fellowship. I hope you've been blessed so far by being in the service of God. I know our friends are joining us now on social media uh, through YouTube and Facebook, maybe real time right now, or maybe connected later on demand to hear the word. However, whatever it is you are, you, 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 you whatever it is that, 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 that you are believing and trusting God for, I pray the Lord will speak to you and minister to you by the reason of his word this, this afternoon in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining with us. We are on part number three today of this series we've been teaching on beating the enemy at his game. Oh, the enemy has a dirty game, an evil game, a wicked game. And and, and the painful thing is, is about this game, it's, it's about wrecking people's life, uh, causing, uh, I beg your pardon, causing maximum damage to people's lives, ruining people's vision and dreams, and making life, lives worth for some people, not even worth living. Ooh, that's the enemy we are dealing with. Who he, he doesn't show mercy. He's, he's out to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He's out to devastate, to ruin, to destroy. He's, he's out to damage, make maximum damage, to wreck uh, you name it, anything that remotely resembles God, uh, human lives, uh, uh, dreams and ministries, marriages, children, child, you know, adults, you know, uh, through all kinds of things, uh, all kinds of ways uh, that, 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 that he walks through and walks by. Um, I'm, I'm grateful to God that over the last two weeks he's been exposing this, this con, this, this, this evil, uh, uh, you know, devil, uh, adversary, enemy. And, and and of course, the more we know about him, the more we we are able to, to 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 know his ways, and the more we can defeat him at the, at this game. And I pray, God Almighty, that we shall always be victors over this enemy, this wicked enemy, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. We begin. We, we began two weeks ago, and and the Lord took us to John chapter ten, verse number ten, and then He taught us, Amen, about the game of the enemy out of John ten, verse number ten. The Bible says to us once, once uh, uh, scripture text in, in, in John chapter 10, verse number 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. The words of the Lord in John chapter 10, verse 10. So it's very clear the game of the enemy. The objective of that game is to seek and destroy. We pray, as always, that the enemy that will not have his way concerning us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. And then last last Sunday we looked at this temptation of Jesus Christ out of Luke chapter number four, and and then the Lord spoke to us mightily and powerfully about the the the, the strategy of the enemy, about the, the the nature of this game. Should I say the nature? The nature is it it it's a, a mind game. It's a it's conversational. He he comes to speak to us in those moments when we are high in the spirit. So one 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 moment you are Peter, the big rock. You are, you have the revelation of who Jesus Christ is, and then the next moment you, you are speaking for the enemy. As 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 trying to talk. Jesus out of his mission and telling him far be it from, from, from him because he told you his mission is to go to Jerusalem and, and suffer many things and be crucified and tell you, be raised back to life and then you become the voice of the enemy Peter and, and Jesus takes, takes charge and, 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 and speaks to Peter but rebukes Satan 
How, how is it that one man, uh, you know, the, 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 in, in a way, the next in line to, 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 to lead the ministry is one moment full of revelation by the Holy Spirit, you know, and, and, and even before the, it is taught or, or spoken, uh, but he's already connected with heaven, high in the spirit of God and, and receiving from the Holy Father. And then the next moment is his voice. It's not really his voice, but the voice of the enemy. <laughs> Oh, the, that is the nature of the enemy, the, the, the game, the nature of the game of the enemy. And, and I please, I would ask that you please go back, revisit our repository where you have the recordings and go back and listen again and again so that you will have more understanding about this evil, this evil, wicked uh, being called Satan, the devil. Amen. We will, by his grace, God's grace, that is, beat the enemy at his game. Today is part number three. And today we're going to be pretty technical, looking at very specific terminologies in the Bible that the, the Lord has put in the Bible to convey and to show us and to sh reveal this foe that we are dealing with. Amen. Just today, by the grace of God, let me call it understanding the enemy and his strategy. Amen. We need to understand the enemy and his strategy. And, and I put down some key scripture texts that we'll begin with. And we'll, we'll go through them, looking at some specific terms that the Bible, you know, that the Lord has put in the word so that we can understand this word and be able to, you know, you know, do what we need to do to beat the enemy at his game. And the Lord, I believe, will help us to do just that in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Let, let's begin with uh, um, three, these four scripture texts, Ephesians chapter 6, verses uh, 10 to 13, uh, 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11, which we read before. Um, we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 6, a key one. Then we look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, which we also, also looked at before. Amen. From these four scripture texts, I'm going to be speaking. And so please follow me as I follow the Holy Spirit in this teaching, understanding the enemy and his game. We know the nature. It's conversational. He speaks to us. You know, we speak back sometimes, maybe, you know, and, and but there are specific strategies that he uses in this conversation. And may the Lord unfold it for us so that we'll be better and wiser to know the, 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 the signs and be able to, uh, you know, not fall into his traps in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we'll begin with Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 13. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. In Ephesians 6, verses uh, 10 to 13, we read in the Bibles, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may, that you may be able to withstand, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Uh-oh. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He says to us, put on the whole armor of God in verse 11, that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. But I will thank you. Amen. That we shall we shall do everything we need to do and be standing in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Church, hear the word of the Lord this morning. Sorry, this afternoon. <laughs> Hallelujah to the God of our salvation. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wilds. Amen. Excuse me. The wise of who? The devil. Wow. So we see this word wise. What is wise? W-I-L-E-S. In the Greek word, in the Greek it is called methodia, from the word methodos. It is where we get the English word method. Amen. So he, the Paul the Apostle that the Lord used to write this, this text for us, he's telling us that the enemy has a method. Amen. Was in the Greek word methodia from the, the root word methodos, methodos, from where we get the English word method. It means the following or pursuing of an orderly and technical procedure in the handling of a subject. Wow. Pretty technical, isn't it? 
the word method means following or pursuing an orderly and technical procedure in the handling of a subject. And so let me explain it as this. The enemy has a, 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 an objective to attack, to steal and destroy. So he follows or pursues an orderly and technical procedure. He is not half as that, he's not zigzag. He, he's methodical, that's the word. He's methodical in his approach, in, his, in, 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 in attacking and sustaining his attack against anybody. So when Paul talks about uh, the words of the devil, he's talking about the method or the methodia or the methodos. The, the way, that is the strategy of the enemy. He's methodical. He has a methodology. That is the procedure he follows. Leo by Leo. Little suggestion, little push, little prod, a little, it keeps going, it won't stop, like a dripping of a tap, a broken tap, drip, 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 all day and all night, until he wears you down, and, 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 and come on, he wears you down, you're tired, you're frustrated, you are, you're disgusted, you want to give up on life, or give up on the vision, or give up on, on the marriage, whatever it is, he's methodical, and us Christians, we just, oh, Oh, my people of God, I, I pray God helps us in Jesus' name. So we've got to be aware that the enemy has method. He has a methodology. You know, it's it's a it's a procedure. It's technical. It's 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 orderly. It's not. I mean, orderly, systematic, if you if you will. Amen. In the New Testament, it is connected with evil doing. Amen. It's it's it's, uh, it's it, we call it devices of the enemy, if you will. You know, call it, call it art, artifice, whatever you want to call it, artifice, method. But it's, it's that procedure that he follows. He, the enemy is strategic. Amen. There were 12 disciples with Jesus. How is it that he spoke through, through Peter, not through Thomas or through Bartholomew? Amen. How? Is he, why, why, how come it's Peter? There's a reason. Amen. And so we'll read Ephesians 6, 10 to 13. And, and, and we focus on this word, the wise or the method of the enemy. Okay. The second scripture I'd like us to read, I'm a word, I read it previously, 2 Corinthians 2, 11. I mean, it's, 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 it's short, it, it, uh, just the one verse. And, and we talked about it last, last Sunday as well. Let Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And so we, we've heard about the word method. Now we're talking about his devices. So what do we mean by his devices? In the Greek, it is noema, from uh, noeo, meaning to perceive your perception, a thought, a concept of the mind, a device, a contrivance, a setup, a plot, a plan, a machination, an apparatus. Oh, can you see how technical the enemy can get just to ruin somebody's day, just to spoil somebody's joy? And so, wise mean method, then he's got the devices that he employs within this methodology or in this method. <laughs> he's got, he's got, and this is basically thoughts or perceptions. Is an orderly or systematic procedure of thought or perception that will not let your mind go. But, oh, God of heaven, I pray that the Lord will help us to understand this. It's a systematic or, or methodical procedure he follows. And then he, he uses perception or thoughts, follows a pattern. Ah, Remember Eve, it was a conversation. Hello, church. It was a conversation. Jesus in the wilderness, we read it. Yes, last sorry, not yesterday, last Sunday. It was a conversation. He's speaking back and forth. And you, you say the enemy don't speak to you? <laughs> ah, Jehovah, thank you, Lord Jesus. The enemy was not in church, but it was quoting scripture to, to Jesus, our king, in the wilderness. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Well, we must move. We must move. And so in 2 Corinthians 2 11, we talk about devices. Uh, a noema of from noe, which means to perceive. It's a thought. It's a, you know, it's a concept of the mind. Of the mind. I hope you got that one. A concept of the mind. Amen. In fact, put it this way: uh, you know, the, your, your mind is the battlefield. You you win in the mind or you lose in the mind. And I pray we shall all win in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. But remember, it's a spiritual war. It's a spiritual battle. It's in the mind. What does that tell you? Mental warfare. For some of us, we call it spiritual. But really, what we are dealing with people of God, it's, it's mental warfare. Feel powered by a spiritual enemy. Amen? Ah, Father, we thank you. We, 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 we move on. So we go to First Peter 5, verse number 8 now. Again, we, we read it, read this before, but, but let's look at it and spend a bit of time here in First Peter 5, 8. Because we want to talk about that word, devil. What is it about this word? Amen. What is it about this word, devil? And so in First Peter 5, verse 8, again, I read to you from my New King James Version of the Holy Bible. Amen. It, it says... Uh, First Peter 5, where are you? He says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, the devil. But look at how he phrases it. Your enemy, the devil. Okay. Walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's not the, he's, he's, he's walking about like, he's an, imita he's an Im imitation of a roaring lion. He's not really the roaring lion. Okay, the, the, the lion we know is the lion of the tribe of Judah. His name is Jesus the Christ. Okay, first Peter 5 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the enemy who comes to steal and to destroy, walks about like a roaring lion. Your adversary or your enemy, the devil. So, what is it with this word, the devil? What is it, or who who who, who is this? What, what is it? Let me let me share with you. Something that the Lord, you know, has been, has been, has been teaching me, Amen. Your adversary, the devil. Your adversary, the destroyer. Your adversary, the the, the damager. Your adversary, the wicked one. Your adversary, the devil. Is the devil really the entity? Is the is the devil really the 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 the, the being, or what the being does? Ah, there you go. Let's look at this text properly. The devil, in the Greek, diabolos, diabolos. Where you get the word diabolic come from? Diabolos. In the Greek, is a compound of two words. Dia, which means through, and balo, which means to cast. So cast through. Cast through. Amen? Compound of two words. So the devil, that word in the Greek is called diabolos. The compound of two words, the first word being dire, meaning which is sorry, meaning through, you know, that's to go through, and then balo, meaning to cast, cast through. So the devil is really a function that our adversary performs by which we know and identify him. The devil is the adversary function or work. So the thief comes, okay, he steals, we, we know that, to kill and steal and to destroy, okay? The enemy, the adversary, Peter says, the devil. So really, the devil is a function of the work he does. It, the, is the, is the, the function that our adversary, the common enemy, performs, by which we know and identify him. So when he said the devil, is really the body of works or damages or destructions that he does. So you can look at a group and you can see somebody who's been antisocial or damaging and you say, oh, that person is just, is just like the devil because the devil does what? Destroys things. So we are talking really about the function of the work that he does. So for example, Jesus called Judas Iscariot, the devil, in John chapter 6, verses 70 and 71. In fact, let's go to John 6, 70 and 71. And Jesus called Judas, amen, the devil. <laughs> How is it that boy? He did. He did. In fact, uh, let me go to, um, yeah. Read it, read it, read it, read it that was. 
In John chapter 6, verse 7 to 71, Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve? And one of you is a devil? Wow. John chapter 6, verse number 70 to 71. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve? And one of you is a devil? He spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it was he who would betray him, being one of the twelve. Is Judas Iscariot a devil? Or is he the devil? No, he's not the devil. He is a devil. Because of what he was going to do in terms of betraying Jesus, accusing him. So the work that Judas was going to do made him qualify as a devil. Because his work, that particular work, was to do what? Accuse and betray. And let this this um, um, the, 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 the Pharisees and the chief priests and all these people come and arrest Jesus and take him, uh, uh, you know, to, to examine him and, to, and then eventually to crucify him. So the accuser and the, and, and the betrayer in this context is who? Judas, a devil. So Jesus called him a devil because of what he was going to do. So the word devil really means, is, it really is about the function the things, the work that the enemy does. And so we say, oh, the devil did this. He's a devil. Why? Because of the thing that he did or she did. Amen. Oh, yes, she. Some of our, come on, I won't say I'll go into any specific thing, but we've heard, we've read and we've seen some stuff. Both from he, not, not just, I mean, not both. Sometimes from he, the he, sometimes from the she. It's a human nature. The wickedness is the human nature. It's not about one particular person. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the, the fallen nature of man. Amen? And occasionally, sometimes even with, with some of us believers, you struggle. Amen? And I pray God will help us always be on top and, and overcome in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. And so, so we see the, the word therefore, devil, it really is not about the being, but rather what the, the being. The being is the enemy. The being is our adversary. What it does. And so Jesus in John 7, 6, 70, 71, calls um, um, Judas a devil. But he called Peter Satan in Matthew 16, 21, 23. We, we, we looked at that already. That, you know, come on, we spoke extensively extensive like that. He, he, Peter trying to talk, talk, him about, talk to him, rebuke him, not that he's not going to go to Jerusalem and suffer many things and be beaten and all of that. But he he he, he rebukes, he 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 speaks to Peter, but he rebukes Satan. He addresses Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Amen. So Judah, Jesus called Judas the devil because under the influence of an evil spirit. Judas will be Christ's accuser and betrayer. But he didn't call Peter devil. Amen. There's a difference. Because Peter was not going to betray him. Peter was not going to do any evil against him. Now you get it. You get, you get, I'm sure you're getting the, what the Lord is saying to us. And Peter was, 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 was like a vessel seized by the enemy to try to, to control. Jesus is a, 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 a direction. Don't, don't go to Jerusalem. Or stay back here. Avoid, avoid all of that. But, but Jesus, knowing his mission, spoke to Satan and rebuked him. Get behind me. But concerning Judas Iscariot, Jesus called him a devil because he was actually going to do what? Work. To do what? Betray him. So it is that work that made Judas Iscariot qualify for Jesus to call him a devil. So when you are looking at First Peter 5 8, the devil, it's the work that he does. Amen. And people of God, the function here, okay, is to follow an orderly and technical procedure of throwing thoughts, suggestions, or fiery darts. Amen. Ephesians 6 verse 16 is all there. Fiery darts. And people until he can change or break through their resistance. So when you go back to the word diabolos, meaning meaning to, to cast through, it is to break through people's defense, suggestions and thoughts and imaginations and all these things. Lies upon lies upon lies in your mind. It's a mind game. It's a mental game. We've taken it, taken it to, the, to one end of 
spiritual warfare, real in truth. The battle is raging in somebody's mind. So it's a mental warfare within the context, the wider context of spiritual warfare. The devil is a spiritual being, so he will speak and put ideas and perceptions and, and imaginations. He will make you see things in action in your mind until he does what? Break through or cast through. Oh, Father, we thank you. We pray as we learn that God exposing this wickedness will help us to be stronger so that when the enemy comes with all of these thoughts and these perceptions and try to break through our defense, break down our mind and begin to walk over us, that God will help us to resist and he will flee from us and, and not be able to break us down or cast through us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember the devices. Remember the, 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 the method. Remember the, the, the devil is not so much as the being, is what the being does, the destruction, the damage, the damage to cast through. Amen. The devil is the one who falsely accuses and divides people without any reason. He's an accuser, a slanderer. Amen. There's nothing worse than a, a person being alone and listening to the devil all day, pumping lies and pumping all this thoughts and ideas and imagination, all this conversation taking place in the mind. Amen. When the mind is broken, nothing, almost certainly nothing, amen, can fix that human, that, that person when the mind is broken. Have you wondered how people anointed, gifted, talented, but when something is wrong in their mind, their life is almost over because of the part the mind plays in the in the in the in the human being amen and that is what the enemy is after that is what the enemy is after we call it spiritual warfare but really it's in the mind church i pray that we all get it amen the devil is one who falsely accuses how he's talking imaginations he will come to you oh my oh woman of god and say things about your husband to you. He meant this. He said that the way he looked at it. It's all lies. Conversation in the mind. Oh man of God. The enemy will come to you and, and tell you things about your wife. The woman you shared vows with. Yes. At the altar. And make you feel as if she is the enemy. Amen. No. She's not the enemy. The, <laughs> the enemy is the adversary. The devil. Amen. And we call him the devil because of the work he does. Jesus called Judas Iscariot a devil, meaning because of the things he was going to do. Okay? The devil is the one who falsely accuses and divides people without any reason. He's an accuser and a slanderer. The devil is called by that name because originally he accused or slandered God in paradise. Amen? He did. The devil still slanders God today by false and blasphemous suggestions. And because he's also the accuser of the brethren before God, he's, he's called our adversary Antidikos. Antidikos in the Greek, meaning opponent. We're on the side of God, in the light of God, he's outside of the light, he's opposite. The slander, the blasphemy, everything. The accusation. Uh, what did he tell you? Did he did God really say? Accuser, slanderer. I hope and I pray that we are all understanding the method, the strategy, and the devil itself. That's the body of work, the things he does. He's the enemy, amen. Antidikos, meaning our, our opponent, Antidikos in the Greek, is 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 diabolical. So we call him the devil. Jesus called Judas a devil because of the work he was going to go and walk. And so today you see some things happening. You say, oh, that is dev devilish. Oh, those that's, that's devilish. Those devilish people. Those No, the people did things that are de <laughs> that reminds us of the work of the enemy, the work of the devil. The enemy, the adversary. The opponent, the accuser of the brethren, is the one behind the fallen, the fallen archangel. Amen. Once upon a time called Lucifer, now called Satan, the devil. 
Amen. Because of the work he does. And I and I pray and I pray that everybody is, is understanding what the Lord is saying. And so, people of God, as I begin to prepare now to bring it to repose. close. I hope you've heard, you have the Lord, you've understood what the Lord has been teaching us. Understanding the strategy of the enemy so that you can understand his game. So it's a mind game. And he has a he has a method, and, and the nature of it is conversational, it's in the mind. Okay, and, and the objective of it is to steal and destroy. Amen. It's after somebody's mind. It's after somebody's soul. Amen. Whoever controls your mind controls your life. Simple. Whoever controls your mind. That is why Romans says, do not be conformed to this world. Meaning the ways of the evil one, the ways of the wicked one, the ways of, of the, the ways of darkness. Brother, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why mind? Why is it renew of your spirit? No, it's not about spirit. It's about the mind. That is where the challenge is, the struggle, and the battle is. And if we don't understand the strategies of the enemy, he's got wise, he's got devices, amen? If we don't understand these things, we will fall prey to the enemy 24-7, 365. We will live a beaten, battered life. But God wants us to live in victory because we already have the victory in Christ Jesus. Our earth is to enforce it, beginning with your mind, beginning from your mind, beginning in your mind. Oh, let's go to... Second Corinthians 10. Uh, Yandebo Karas Gidianda. Let's look at Second Corinthians 10. I will, I will I will I will close with this. Let me cut it a bit short. Amen. Second Corinthians 10, 3 to 6. It's a mental warfare. Even though it's the the the, the, the forces is is, is is spiritual forces. Amen. You are not ordinary, you are a spirit being in the body. And so when you speak, you speak the words of God that are spiritual. It's a spiritual warfare, but it's mental. Amen. Oh, yeah, both scary. I'm, I'm, you won't believe the attack the enemy brings against some of us. Oh, God of heaven. I have seen dark days in my mind, even though the sun was bright on the outside, because the enemy wants to, to steal, kill, and destroy. But I know I have the victory in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so are you. And so, and so are you. You have the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we must understand the enemy and his strategy. Second Corinthians chapter number 10, verses 3 to 6, please. Amen. We will edge towards the closure with this text. In Second Corinthians chapter number 10, if we read it in the Bibles, it says to us, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. We walk, we live, we sleep in the flesh. But we do not war, war, warfare, battle, fight. The contention, the conflict, is not according to the flesh. It's not about uh, punches and kicks and and spears and javelins or, or machetes or cutlass or guns or whatever it is. It's not about none of those. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal; they are not fleshy, but mighty in God. But remember, God is spirit, so our weapons are spiritual. Amen. But are, are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Uh oh. I thought it was the devil and everything. Uh oh, pulling down strongholds, casting down argument. Uh oh, and every heightening that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled or perfected. Ah, we need to spend a few minutes here, people of God. For though we walk in the flesh like we do, amen, we live in the flesh. We are not in heaven just yet, even though we know we are heavenly bound, amen. We are still in the flesh and, and on the earth, amen. For though we walk in the flesh, we don't walk into the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not kind of almighty in God. For pulling down strong goods, cast it on arguments, cast it on arguments. And every high thing, every high thing that is not itself against the knowledge of God. Uh oh, so knowledge versus knowledge in you. Whose philosophy will you follow? Will you believe? Whose report will you believe? Uh, bringing every thought into captivity into to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is, is fulfilled or perfected or, 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 or complete. Let's take it slowly one by one. We agree we're in the flesh. We live in a physical, natural house. You do flat house, mansion, penthouse, whatever you are this morning, I don't know. Amen. But you live in, a, in an accommodation. You live, you have your spirit lives in the body. Okay. And the body is, is earthly. It's not this one won't go to heaven. 
but the war, the battle, and the enemy indeed. And our weapons for this warfare is not flesh, it's not kind of, it's not physical. So please don't carry machete, don't carry, you know, guns or knives or whatever it is. They may not we won't do that. But mighty in God. Mm -hmm. So our weapons are in God. Mm -hmm. Because it is God who works our weapons. Amen. So when you pray, for example, let's say prayer is a weapon. When you pray, you're not just praying. You are not just praying out loud or quiet. You are not just praying to the into the air, into the atmosphere. You are praying to Almighty God. So it's God, our God, who will walk the prayer, who will walk the prayer so that it is effectual, effective, and then you get the desired results. So when we pray, when we praise, when we worship, when we speak the words of God, whatever it is that we do that is, is, is part of this arsenal, an arsenal of, war, of, of weapons, everything goes to God. It is God who then works it out on our behalf. To bring to pass that which we've spoken, decreed, declared, proclaimed, or asked for, or decreed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. So the weapons we have are in God. And the weapons do what for us? To pull down strongholds. Where do strongholds come from? Oh, cast down arguments. What arguments? And every high thing that has done itself against the knowledge of God. Where is this knowledge of God? So everything we read, people of God, is taking place in the believer, in you, in me. This warfare, this battle is in the mind. And if you go back to the intervention of Jesus Christ, all that conversation, all that, all, that, all that argument with the enemy was taking place in his mind. Everything that Jesus Christ went through was is what we are reading about here right now. Amen. Come on, people of God. It was a conversation. The enemy would not give up. It was a power, powerful and forceful push to get Jesus to fall as he was being tempted. Arguments. And Jesus kept on refute, refuting and rebuking the enemy. Refuting every argument and rebuking the enemy. Until he left him to come back at, an opportunity, at, a, at another opportunity. So we see some words here to help us give us a better understanding and a better picture. We have weapons in God. So everything we do must be in God. You cannot attack the devil. You cannot defend against the devil outside of God. Because ha, 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 everything we have is in Christ. The victory. But this is what we must do. What we must do. Pull down the strongholds. The strongholds beg your pardon. Cast down the arguments. And cast down every height in that exerts itself against the knowledge of God. And bring every thought. Thinking, imagination, those ideas, those perceptions, those concepts that he puts in your mind. Remember them? What did we call them before? Devices. The thought, the concept of the mind. Remember? Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 5. He says it. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Devices. The ones is the method. And devices, these are the things here. He employs. Amen. The contrivance, the setup, the, 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 the plot, the plan, the machination, the apparatus that he uses against us. Father, we thank you for victory always in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm spending this time dealing with this because, because a lot of us are struggling. Your next door neighbor would not know. Your wife on the same bed would know. Your husband would not know. But there's a war, a battle raging on inside somebody's mind. And on the outside, they try to keep calm. They try to be in control. Amen. Come on, people. Uh, we shall not give the devil any foot in any yard, any foot, any inch in Jesus' name. No, 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 no. We don't allow him at all in Jesus' name. So I said, prepare to close it. What is a stronghold? A stronghold is a place that is fortified, it's a, it's a fortress, a place where a particular group activity or set of opinions in, you know, is concentrated. Remember the demonic man, demon possessed man in Mark chapter 5. Who will live in the tombs? Yes. There was a stronghold. And that is what the enemy wants. To have a stronghold over the believer's mind. Amen. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. Pull it down strongholds. It's, it's, which means the enemy does build it. But we have the power and the grace by God. In Christ Jesus to pull it down. 
no matter the, the, the mountain of thoughts, no matter the fortress of imaginations, no matter the stronghold, amen, of, 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 of concepts is beating your mind. You can, you have the power, the grace in Christ to pull it down in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. And I and I and I and I see people pulling things down right now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. No matter the lie that he has told you over years and years about whoever it is, no matter the deception, you have the grace and the power in Christ to what pull it down in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. What about imaginations? Amen. Imaginations in the Greek is called logismos. You ever get the word logic? Amen. Logismos, uh, which means to reckon, to think through, a reckon in the calculation, a consideration, a reflection, preceding and determining a person's conduct. So before you do anything, you go back and think about it and you reflect imagination. Amen. Actually, these are considerations and intentions which are hostile to the gospel and to God. Pulling down what? Strongholds. What else is he pulling down? Imaginations. Amen. Or arguments, if you would. Amen. <laughs> Casting on arguments or imaginations and every high thing and exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Jesus had knowledge of God in him, but the enemy kept on coming with scripture, coming with, uh, with all kinds of all, all kinds of and, 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 and seduction to, to try and get him. Amen. In the mind. Hallelujah. I promise I won't be too long now. Amen. I promise you. Imaginations. And then of course, the high thing. High thing. What is the high thing? Something that is exalted, raised, prior, prioritized, or preferred options, ideas, suggestions, concepts, compared with the word of God. Or contrary to what God expects us to do, as we read in the Bible. Let me say it again. What is a high thing? It's an exalted thing, a raised thing, a prioritized or, 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 or a preferred opinion, or opinions, ideas, or suggestions, or concepts. When you compare them with the word of God, or that are contrary to what God expects us to do, as we read in the word of God. Example, Jesus' his temptation takes him to the the pinnacle of it. No, no, it takes to a high mountain. Look at all this. The kingdoms, their glory. All their man I'll give to you if you just worship God and worship me. So he's bringing something that is exalted, that is raised, that is preferred. Authority. You just have it. No, but the word of God says only God shall we worship. And that is how the Lord just can answer the enemy. So he will show you something that is exalted. Oh, better quality, better life, a better man, a better woman, more money. But that is not what the gospel says, or the word of God says to do. So he will show you a better option. Indeed, that is what he showed Jesus. No, 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 look, take, just bow down and worship me. So everything Jesus went through, we too, it may not be in the same text, but we will go through Similar. Amen. In similar contexts. So last Sunday, Jesus' temptation was a, a clear, a, a pattern, an example to teach us that the enemy will come against us with better options, heightened, exalted, raised, the, the preferred options, the ideas or groups, uh, um, um, suggestions or concepts when you compare it with what the Bible teaches. It will look, but that is not what the Bible says for us to do. So if we are going to be the enemy and his game, people of God, we must know his strategy, his methods, his devices, the wires, the devices. And of course, this procedure, this systematic methodical approach that it takes to keep hammering and hammering and hammering. And we saw it with Jesus Christ. After three great reasons, he left him he gave him a break. He was going to come back. That was not it. So one victory today does not mean there's no guarantee another victory tomorrow. But what he would, what he does do for us is that since we defeated him one time, we will always defeat him. We can always defeat him again and again and again and again in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Church, I don't know any 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 better way to to wrap this and to and to and to and to teach it. But I've just 
be speaking as the Spirit of God has been giving me utterance. I pray you've been able to follow. Amen. The enemy is methodical. He won't approach it is, is he won't approach you, you know, half you know, no, no. He will plan, he'll be prepared, he will be an orchestrated attack. He has a procedure, he has a method, amen. The wife, and then he will employ devices. He will employ what devices, he will employ you know the contrivance, the, the, the plan, the ideas, the thoughts, the, the concept, and then we keep at it. And then, oh, sometimes overflow your mind, it becomes a stronghold. You can't quite get away with this particular thing you've been thinking about all day because of, 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 of what somebody said to you, or your husband said, or your wife said, or the pastor said. It, it's, it's like a big, big thing in your mind. That's a stronghold. But the Bible says, oh, we can pull it down in God. There's grace available to pull it down. And I think for the moment, I'm going to just speak in Jesus' name. That maybe somebody or two people, I don't know how many, are dealing with thoughts and things in your mind. Like, like he's told us today, it's not me teaching, don't let me teaching it. Amen. That it's, yes, it's spiritual forces, but the battleground is your mind. So it's mental warfare in the context of spiritual warfare. But we've so moved to the one extreme end of spiritual warfare. And people are wrestling with mental God. Oh, and, uh, in the last 10 years, I believe the church is waking up to listen about mindfulness, listen about mental health, or mental wealth, as my son called it when he spoke to us a few months ago about this, about this topic, Amen. mental wealth. Yes. And people are trying to approach it with physical uh, remedies. It's good. But really, it's spiritual remedy, but it's spiritual forces. is the is the diabolic one, the diabolical one, the diabolos, amen. Who's trying to break through or cast through? He's the one that is behind it, and the work, devil, amen. As I prepare to close it, I hope somebody you got you got something from the Lord. I have teaching it. You know, there's no particular way I could have. Taught it, but just to go through scripture looking at this text and this particular terminology that, that the Bible has put in, in, in the world for us to learn by that the enemy is out there to try to steal somebody's mind, you know, steal somebody's soul. And when the mind is broken, when the mind is occupied by the enemy, how can you how, remember the two great commandments? Serve the Lord your God with all of your what heart, your mind, your soul, amen, and your strength. Well, if your mind is taken by the enemy, and of course the mind, the, the soul is the seat of the mind, which means the enemy is taken over the soul, how can you serve God? Look around you, all over the world. Anybody, no matter how beautiful, handsome, talented, no matter how skilled they are, if their mind is broken, their life is, up there. I mean, their productive life is almost certainly over. They may still be alive. Amen. Well, can you trust them for with, with anything? The answer is almost certainly you can't, you know, you can't trust them because their mind is broken. So the mind is key. That is where the battle is raging. That is where the warfare is. And so God, in his mercy, is asking us to be ready. We have we have weapons in him to pull down these strongholds that the enemy tries to build, to pull down these arguments, these imaginations, to cast them down. And every opinion, every high thing, everything that is exalted against the knowledge of God that the enemy brings to us, to be able to do what? Hold it and clamp it, subject it into captivity. So that it's under us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me read it again for us. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 6, as I, as I close. Amen. Hope you've been blessed today. Amen. For though we walk in the flesh, we don't walk, walk according to the flesh. We do not walk according to the flesh. And so for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments. Amen. Or imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That is why Jesus was speaking scripture. Amen. You shall not tell the Lord your God. Amen. Even when the enemy spoke, spoke scripture, Jesus spoke scripture. He's bringing the preferred opinion, you know, the kingdoms of this world, as against what God has told his son to do. So as I, as I remind us of what scripture says, my prayer people of God, is that we, we, we have heard God and we will learn and by this word, 
Amen. And by this word that we've heard today, be above, walking in victory over the enemy and everything that he will try to bring against us. No matter the method, no matter the procedure, no matter the system, no matter the, 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 no matter the, 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 the invitation, no matter the seducement, no matter what he throws at us, that the grace available to us in Christ, with that we shall take a hold of it and pull down all of these strongholds, all of these arguments or imaginations, pull down in Jesus' name, amen, and subject every high thing, in, amen, to captivity, so that it's under Christ in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. It's been part number three of beating enemies. But the grace of God next Sunday, we try and draw a line as we go to part number four. Well, until next Sunday, please be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Keep the faith. God is on your side. He's for you. And so by him and, and him and through him, victories are assured you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep the faith. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And